and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X Research and Professional Physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Cosmic Ray Flux Increase and the Weather. Now as indicated in article 113, Planet X Cosmic Rays and the Sun's Magnetic Field, the cosmic ray flux has increased by 13% since May of 2015. And cosmic rays are any particle with energy of 100 MeV or more. And the cosmic ray particle travels at a speed which is greater than 40% of the speed of light. In other words, they are relativistic particles. Most of these particles go right through the Earth's magnetosphere. Cosmic rays are made up of mostly ionized hydrogen or protons, um, 89%. Um, some ionized helium, about 10% of them, and about 1% or other nuclei such as iron, silicon, oxygen, carbon, and magnesium. The sun is also a source of cosmic rays, but when these come from the sun, they are called solar energetic particles. Cosmic rays give rise to showers of secondary particles, some of which reach the, the surface and are damaging to living organisms. And it is thus concerning when there is an increase in the number of, of cosmic rays impacting the Earth. But it has also been suggested that cosmic rays impact Earth's climate. So in this article, I will consider this climate aspect. And this is the data obtained uh, through spaceweather.com that shows a 13% increase from uh, 26 May 2015 up to 14th June 2017. So a 13% increase um, in that time. Now, an article by Brian Tinsley in 1991 indicated that there was a correlation between cosmic ray flux and winter cyclone intensity. However, the proposal that increased cosmic flux leads to increased cloud uh, cover remains unproven. And in fact, Michael Ram and Michael R. Stoltz um, concluded in 2009 that current satellite data on cloud cover does not provide evidence supporting the existence of a connection between low solar activity, which uh, leads to increased cosmic radiation entering the solar system, and cloud cover. So how are we to take this apparently contradictory evidence? The problem with the idea that cosmic ray flux increase may lead to effects on the weather is that it does not reflect the reality of how things work in the sun and in the universe. The sun itself is a source of cosmic rays and much greater uh, source than is usually mentioned in research studies. And the fact that cosmic rays increase um, due to this, um, what is happening with the sun is usually therefore not considered. Now the fact that the sun is weakening independent of the solar cycle is not usually mentioned either. In addition, cosmic ray flux from the sun increases when the number of coronal hole increases. And these uh, have increased substantially as the sun continues to weaken. This is also not mentioned. In addition, cloud formation on this planet is being artificially impacted by cloud seeding or chemtrails. This artificial interference in cloud formation makes any connection between cosmic ray flux and cloud formation impossible to establish. Now, um, the real connection between cosmic ray flux and uh, what is happening with the sun is through what is causing all the changes in the sun. And here we see what the cause of that change is. It's these objects, which I call stellar cores. I started out calling them brown dwarf stars uh, because that's what they were according to uh, the education that I've been through regarding these objects. In fact, they are old stars. They are not planets, but you can see here that this object is clearly striped. And in addition, the stripe is curved. 
it follows the curvature of a spherical object. This is not just something happening in the sun. These are stripes on a spherical object. Now, but the worst of it is that no researcher ever mentions, of course, that what is actually causing all these changes on the sun are these objects. And therefore, these are the real cause of an increase in cosmic ray flux. And without looking at the true cause of what's causing all the changes, no researcher is ever going to be able to establish uh, the correct connection. Now, observational evidence for the presence of these objects in the solar system is detailed in many of my articles, but a recent one is Article 116, Planet X Objects, Unbelievable Evidence and Size. The stellar core shown here above is, of course, obviously striped and therefore looks a lot like Jupiter in appearance. The fact that Jupiter is a star in generating radiation shows that it is likely that Jupiter invaded the solar system in the past and most likely interacted much in the same way that the current stellar cores are doing. But Jupiter ended up settling down into a regular orbit. Why is that? Well, the stellar cores, as I said, are old stars and they make magnetic connections with the sun through which they absorb plasma and dust energy from the sun. They also seem to use this energy um, and plasma to regain the ability to emit light once again in a process known as rejuvenation, which I detail in Article 100, Planet X Objects, the rejuvenation process. However, since they are old stars which have a decreased ability to generate electric potential, which they use to ionize the ionizing material and through that emit radiation, and they also have a decreased ability to generate a magnetic field. So the magnetic field they are generating now is much uh, lower than what they were generating as a main sequence star. And as they continue to age, it is likely that eventually they will lose the ability to connect magnetically with the sun. So what we see here is the magnetic connection that these objects make with the sun. Uh, if they are far away, what results on the sun is a coronal hole. We don't actually see the particles spiraling along the magnetic field lines between the sun and the stellar core. We do know that the magnetic field lines add coronal holes or what I call what is usually called open field lines. And this is because they are perpendicular to the surface of the sun. But yet, um, any physicists know that there is no such thing as an open magnetic field line, that magnetic field lines must always form closed loops. So if a magnetic field go line goes outwards away from the sun, it must come back or close somewhere and come back and form a loop. Thus, the fact that they are open is because these stellar cores are affecting the sun's magnetic field and actually pulling the sun's magnetic field outwards to connect with their own magnetic field. And this is what leads to the connections that they make with the sun. And if they are very close to the sun, uh, this connection is very intense and actually looks like a root. And this is what we see here. We see one of these stellar cores connecting to the sun. We can see the connection that they make with the sun in several wavelengths of light. Uh, this one is in 17.1 nanometers or 171 angstrom. This one is in the 304 angstrom or 30.4 nanometers. And you can see that it seems thicker because not all of the particles um, moving along these magnetic field lines uh, emit the same light. So obviously uh, it looks, the connection looks thicker here. The object is not actually seen in this image because um, uh, it's not emitting uh, light so that we can see the outline there. Uh, the object in this case seems to be dark, so most likely a newer arrival because as, as they spend more time in the sun's corona, they absorb more plasma from the sun and thus they seem to be enveloped in corona and seem to be emitting light. Uh, but we can clearly see the spherical Ob there is a spherical object here in the 193 angstrom image. 
Now, this object, uh, when compared in size to the Sun, uh, seemed to be about half the size of Jupiter, or had half uh, the radius of Jupiter. Now, here's another one, um, also a dark one, but we can see that there is a spherical object there as part of uh, the plasma in the Sun's corona seems to sort of hug it so that we can see its outline. Um, it is obviously dark. We, this part is, is not covered by the corona, but we can see it. its dark outline here. And we can see the root-like plasma connections it is making with the sun. And we can see that there are two of them. This one is closer to the detector, and this one is further back and straight. This one um, seems to uh, separate into finger-like projections. So uh, these objects can stay anchored to the sun for many hours through the magnetic connections they make with the sun. And of course, that's totally um, uh, against what we would expect if uh, it was a gravitational interaction that was occurring between them and the sun. We'd expect them uh, to just collide with the sun and disappear beneath the layers of the sun. This is obviously not happening. But the connection also seems to lead to solar flare events and CMEs from the region of this connection. And during these explosive events, the stellar cores are ejected away from the sun with CME plasma. So that's possible that once the ability to make a magnetic connection with the sun decreases, that the attractive force ca causing them to be strongly attracted to the sun, which normally would lead them to come back after some time, will not be strong enough to bring them back after uh, one of these ejection events, and they may then settle into an, a regular orbit around the Sun. So you can see these objects being ejected during CMEs, this one from September 26, 2017, clearly a spherical object moving away from the Sun with CME material. And this one is from July 23, 2017, there was a strong solar flare at the time, and we can see a clearly a spherical object within CME plasma. I've written a lot about this object and how it moved away from the Sun. I've calculated its speed. Um, it seemed to move from this point um, and um, uh, at a speed of about 776 uh, kilometers per second. And this object is about the same size as the Sun, which is indicated by the white circle on the occulter. Now here are some images. The, this one is in 193 angstrom. These are from August 17, 2017. You can see uh, the object there. It's darker than the rest of the corona. It forms a circular uh, pattern. It's definitely uh, therefore a spherical object. You can faintly see the connection here in 193 angstrom. Uh, this is in the 211 angstrom. It's not as easy to see the object. Um, we can still see uh, the connections in the same shape. Both images are from 654 UTC. Now these images are from exactly the same time, 654, but this one is uh, in 304 angstroms and this one in 131 angstroms. And again we see the connection that this object is making with the Sun. We can see the same V-shaped pattern in all of these connections. We can see that V-shaped pattern here, V-shaped pattern here. This is clearly the same connection in different wavelengths. Now the 130, the 304 angstrom is usually light. It comes from the chromosphere. So this is basically um, light uh, or plasma that comes from the chromosphere and therefore emits this uh, wavelength of light. And it also emits uh, 131 angstrom light. And the 131 angstrom like um, usually comes from plasma that is at a temperature of 10 million Kelvin. And this is close to the maximum temperature plasma reaches on the Sun and usually only in flaring regions. So plasma seen 
in this light is therefore extremely hot and energetic. And since we see the connection between the sun and the stellar core very clearly in this wavelength of light, this plasma connection is very intense, energetic, and hot. This therefore also suggests why the connection the stellar cores make with the sun can lead to solar flares. So this intense connection, uh, which produces a, a very high electric field, is leading to solar flare events because of the energy involved in these connections. Now these objects are draining the sun and affecting the earth. The sun is electrical in nature and, and so is the earth. These objects connect magnetically, magnetically with the sun and induce currents in the earth's ionosphere and thus lead to increased ionization of the earth's atmosphere. Uh, which in turn affects weather patterns and leads to more severe weather patterns as detailed in Article 122, Electric Weather, Why Is It Getting More Severe? In addition, stellar core magnetic fields induce currents inside the Earth, which increase earthquake and volcanic activity, as these are also electrical in nature. An earthquake is an electrical discharge, and a seismic wave is analogous to underground thunder. This is detailed in Article 38, the electrical nature of earthquakes, and Article 56, the planet X system and volcanoes, reveal that the universe is electrical. Thus, cosmic ray flux is indeed connected to severe weather, but through a connection that most researchers do not want to consider. The connection is the stellar cores which have invaded the solar system. This weakening effect on the sun causes the sun's magnetic field to decrease, thus allowing more cosmic rays to enter the solar system. They also cause an increase in coronal holes, which causes an increase in cosmic ray flux, this time from the sun. In addition, these objects increase the ion ionization of the Earth's ionosphere, which drives weather phenomena and thus leads to more severe weather. There is also a connection between cosmic ray flux and cloud cover, but this connection is driven by human interference. This is because chemtrail spraying seems to mostly be due to a desire on part of the powers that be to hide the system of stellar course from the Earth's population. Thus, the increased numbers of these objects and the fact that more and more of them are rejuvenating and becoming visible is leading to an increase in aerosol spraying of chemtrails and thus to cloud cover. And um, what we see here are straight line clouds, which are of course not normal. These are seeded by aerosols spread by jets in the upper atmosphere. These clouds spread out from thin white line of aerosol left by the plane as it passes overhead. And of course the sun here is white, surrounded by a uh, pink uh, edge. This is not our normal sun as I have written before. This is a sun simulator. In conclusion, the connection between cosmic ray flux and weather phenomenon uh, becomes clear once the true cause of increased cosmic ray flux and severe weather is understood and acknowledged. The presence of stellar cores in the solar system is the primary cause for both the cosmic ray flux increase and weather event severity increase. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.